Hey there, I'm Bill and welcome to Project Build, where today we're going to take all these tools from around the shop and show you how to make this workbench to store all of them in. That has two rotating tops for big and heavy tools, six flip up panels for smaller bench mounted tools, six drawers for storage of materials and tool accessories, can also function as an in feed or out feed table, and is portable. All right, let's make it. I started making the frame for the workbench by cutting two by fours to link for the legs, top rails, and cross members on the miter saw. Then I screwed both top rails to the ends of the cross members using construction screws. I cut spacers out of three quarter inch plywood on the table saw. And I tacked the spacers in place at the ends of the top rails using my brad nailer. I clamped each leg in place, setting the top rail in a quarter of an inch from the outside edge of the leg and put four screws to the top rail into the back of the leg and two screws through the front. I also tacked a small piece of quarter inch pine plywood to cover the ends of the top rail and the plywood spacer. This isn't necessary, it just makes it a little prettier. I set the bottom side rails off the ground using some 2x3 scraps and then screwed in those side rails through the front of the leg. I used a pocket hole jig that's made specifically for 2x lumber to drill two pocket holes in the ends of the front and back bottom rails and screwed those in place. If you don't have this jig, you could just toe screw these rails into place instead. I cut some 45 degree miter blocks on the miter saw and tacked them in place with my brad nailer. Then I pre-drilled and screwed them in. These will really help to keep the workbench square and to strengthen these corners, which is important as this is where all the weight will be when the bench is up on casters, which we'll add later in the video. I added four evenly spaced cross members at the bottom of the workbench. I also wanted to add some support in the middle of the workbench, so I drilled a pocket hole into the inside edge of each of the center cross members and then screwed them to a 2x3 that runs perpendicular to the middle two cross members. And we're done with the frame! On to making the rotating tool storage tops. I laid the pieces for the rotating top out and screwed the sides in place through the front and back. Then I added two cross pieces to strengthen this top as it is going to have a lot of weight attached to it. I cut a piece of scrap wood and clamped it in place to hold the workbench to the correct width and to support the top. Then I placed the top in position and added 1 8 inch thick washers at the four corners to hold the top at the correct spacing from the side rails of the workbench. Once it was aligned correctly, I marked the center point of the rotating top and continued this line over to the side of the top rail using my speed square. I marked this halfway point and center punched it. I drilled pilot holes for the metal rod to go through using a portable drill guide. It will never be confused with the drill press for accuracy, but it gives a lot better results than trying to eyeball it. With the pilot holes started, I continued them all the way through the rotating top and then set the top aside when I was done. I enlarged the holes for the metal rod using a hole saw, starting the hole from one side going in about halfway and then finishing the hole from the other side. These holes were still slightly undersized, so I cleaned them up with a small drum sander attachment on a drill. Then I repeated this for the holes in the rotating top, as well as adding a piece of 2x3 to support the center. I cut the steel rod to length using a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder, and tested to make sure that the rod fits snugly in all of the holes that we drilled for it before assembling the rotating top. We got all the holes drilled and we're just about ready to assemble this whole rotating top. We we're running into a small problem. The washers I used as spacers earlier, they were gonna be used right here to act as a spacer in between the rotating top and the actual frame of the workbench. And they're supposed to have an inner diameter of three quarters of an inch, but they're actually too small and they won't fit over the steel rod. I think I figured out a solution to this problem. Let's find out. I drilled a pilot hole for a hole saw and some scrap 1 8 inch polycarbonate, then used a large hole saw at a slow speed to cut the outside diameter of the spacer. I'm supporting the sides of the polycarbonate, but it would have been easier to just clamp it to a sacrificial piece of wood and drill through it that way. I followed this with a 3 quarter inch hole saw and cleaned up the rough edges with the utility knife. I put our new spacers in place and used a screwdriver to align them with the holes in the wood. I coated the entire steel rod with paraffin wax. This lubricates where the rod contacts the wood and keeps it from making an ear splitting squeal. No one wants that. I pushed the rod in halfway, added the middle support piece, and then used a wooden block and a hammer to knock the rod over to the other side. Before pushing the rod through the other side, I added some more wax to the rod at both ends where it is about to go into the wood and then knocked it through. It should spin freely and quietly at this point. 
I added more wax to the center of the rod and slid the middle support into place. Then I screwed it through the sides, letting the screw span the small extra gap that was left by cutting this piece slightly too short. I locked the steel rod in place by tightening down shaft collars on the ends, and I'm pretty fascinated by it at this point if you couldn't tell. Now we need to add plywood tops to our frame. I started by cutting a quarter inch sheet of plywood for the bottom shelf of the workbench using a circular saw and straight edges. I then cut out the corners with the jigsaw so it would fit around the workbench legs, dropped the plywood in place, and screwed it to the frame below. I added a simple 2x4 square frame, spanning the two center crossmember supports at both the top and bottom of the workbench to support the middle, and screwed it in. Don't get too attached to the square, it gets changed later in the video. I cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to size for the top of the workbench just as I did for the one at the bottom, and then cut two lines down the sides for the rotating top cutout using an edge guide. And then plunge the saw down into the plywood against the straight edge to connect the two edge cuts. Circular saws don't cut as long at the bottom of the workpiece as they do at the top, so to connect the corners I mark them with the straight edge and finish the cut with a jigsaw. I took the cutout plywood squares and trimmed them to size on the table saw so they can be used for the rotating top. I aligned the rotating top flush with the rest of the plywood and clamped it in place. I then drilled a hole in the side of the workbench, first with the drill guide, then all the way through, and enlarged the hole on the back side of the rotating top and screwed in a threaded insert. This allows us to lock the top in place using a threaded star knob. We need to be able to lock the rotating top when the underside is up as well, so I flipped it over, making sure it was level, and clamped it in place. I drilled a hole through the rotating top using the existing hole in the workbench as a guide, and added another threaded insert to the backside. Next I added the main plywood top of the workbench, first countersinking and putting a screw in each corner, and then screwing in the rest of the top. I didn't screw in the plywood for the rotating tops yet, as we need to leave those off in order to mount the tools. I flipped the top over so the workbench side was down, and cut out two more plywood squares for the tool mounting sides of the rotating tops on the table saw, and set one of them in place here. I countersunk holes and drove in screws to hold it in place. I used longer screws here, as this plywood will have a lot of weight attached to it. With the top screw down, I had Mrs. Bill help me lift the planer on top, and that thing is heavy. Thanks, Mrs. Bill. I marked the mounting holes for the planer and drilled through the top. I added plywood squares to the bottom to reinforce the mounting points and then drilled through those two. I dropped in the mounting bolts from the top and tightened the stop nut from underneath to hold the planer in place. Before flipping it back over, I lowered the planer down to both conserve space under the table and to lower the center of gravity and make it easier to flip. I then loosened the locking knobs and man is that ever satisfying. I added toggle latches to the ends of the workbench to support these ends of the rotating top. I should have done this before mounting the planer, as I had to flip the top many times to put these on. Learn from my mistakes. I then adjusted the latch so that it firmly locked the top in place, and then added a stop nut to keep the latch from spinning freely and coming loose. I needed to add hooks to the other end of the rotating top as well, so I flipped it over, but the hooks I just mounted interfered with the top of the workbench. So I cut small notches with my jigsaw to allow the hooks to pass through, and once I could flip it over, I screwed in the hooks on the other side. I also added a cabinet pole to the corner to give me a handle to help with flipping the top over. To bring the non-tool side flush with the rest of the workbench, I set the plywood in place and then laid out stacks of washers flush with the main plywood top in the low areas. Then I super glued the washers to the 2x4 frame and screwed the top in place. The planer is mounted. To use it, we'll unscrew both retaining knobs, unhook the latches, flip it over, hook the latches back, screw the knobs in, and we're ready to go. So I've been adding the scroll saw to the other side of the workbench opposite of the planer and I've run into a little bit of a problem. The scroll saw is actually longer than the rotating top that it sits on and it's designed to overhang the front by about four inches. This all works really well when the scroll saw is up at the top of the workbench, but I didn't account for the overhang down here on the bottom and it actually hits our middle support here. So I've got to redesign this middle support 
so that it's still strong and supports the middle of the workbench, but doesn't interfere with the front of the saw here. Okay then. I added some temporary supports to the middle to keep it from sagging and then removed the old frame and took it apart to reuse the pieces. I doubled up 2x4s to make a center beam, screwing them together with 4 screws on one side and then 4 more on the other. Then I added a piece across the bottom, flipped that over and added another one at the top. I added a smaller piece at the top to go between the two 2x4 two cross pieces that are at the top of the workbench. Back at the workbench, I screwed back in the old bottom of the frame, knocked my support structure into place, and screwed it in. Doubling up the bottom plate helps to distribute the weight as the load changed from being across two of the bottom 2x4s to being a point load in the middle of them. To further strengthen this support structure, I added some diagonal pieces, first tacking them in place with long brads and then pre-drilling and screwing them in place. With all four in, the support structure is done and the scroll saw fits great. At this point, the workbench was too heavy to move around anymore, so I added casters to it. I screwed in the base of the caster and then added the wheel, sliding a bolt through and adding the stop nut to the end, and then repeated for the handle and tightened them both. These casters are really neat as they allow the legs of the workbench to sit on the ground, but with a push of the handles, the legs lift off the ground, allowing us to easily move a big heavy workbench like this around. Next, I added two by threes across the fronts of the workbench screwing them in with HD pocket hole screws. These rails aren't for strength, they just give us something for our flip up tool panels to rest against. I'm using what is called a five knuckle hinge to make this work. These hinges are specifically made for three quarter inch material and allow for 270 degrees of rotation, which is what we need to allow a tool to be stored under the table and then flip up to the top of the bench where we can use it. Pretty neat. I mounted two hinges to the underside of the plywood overhang for the first flip up panel. The hinges extend pretty deep under the plywood and this is why we needed the spacer that we put between the legs and the frame of the workbench earlier. I cut six pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood for the flip up panels on the table saw and then cut out access holes using my jigsaw on the four panels that will be at the ends of the workbench so we have a way to reach the retaining knobs of the rotating tops. Then I flipped the top into position and screwed the hinges to it. I needed a way to hold the flip up panels at the ends out of the way so the tools mounted to them don't interfere while using the rotating tops, so I added a small kickstand to the top of the rail. There's not a ton of space on the sides of the planer, so only smaller tools like my pocket hole jig will fit at this end. I figured out where it would fit under the table and then placed it on the panel and as it's pretty light, I simply screwed it directly to the panel. After a quick test to make sure it fits, I screwed in the rest of the mounting holes. And then added the other five flip up panels. To add extra support for the hinges, I countersunk and screwed additional screws through the main workbench top using longer screws near the hinge locations. The middle flip up panels are reserved for heavier tools like my bench sander, so I added a third hinge to the two middle panels and screwed in a 2x3 directly under the hinges to further support them. To hold the flip up panels in place when in storage position, I drilled through the front of the panel into the rail behind, then enlarged the hole in the rail and added a threaded insert. Now I can lock them down using star knobs. To mount something heavy like my bench sander, I first put down a plywood base and set my sander on top. Then I marked the mounting holes and drilled them out. I used the holes that I just drilled to mark the flip up panel and drilled a large shallow hole and a smaller deeper hole with Forstner bits so that the washer and bolt I'm using to mount the sander can be recessed in the flip up panel. I added threaded inserts to the bottom of the plywood base and then put fully threaded bolts through them and tightened them down. I attached the base to the flip up panel using screws. Lots of screws. I set the sander down on the posts and tightened it all down. I may have gone a little overboard with the number of screws I used to attach the base, but I wanted the load to be supported as the sander weighs nearly 50 pounds. Besides, this would only be a problem if for some reason I needed to remove the plywood base entirely and, uh oh, well, some time later and I've traded the 3 quarter inch plywood base for a half inch one and adjusted the sander position and I've just barely managed to get it to fit, but fit it does. Alright, so I'm done mounting all my tools to the flip up panels and in total I've only mounted three tools here and I have three spaces left 
for future bench tools as I build out my tool arsenal and become a larger tool owner. I added a simple frame made from strips of scrap plywood for the drawer slides to mount to by first screwing a strip across the 2x4s underneath and then adding notch strips across the first. Then I mounted the drawer slides to the sides of the notch strips and slotted the drawers in place. I pressed the drawer faces on the front, aligned them, and then screwed them on with pocket holes. If you're interested in seeing more about how I make drawers, I put a link in the video description where you can check that out. Depending on what tools you mounted on the rotating tops, you may need to adjust the height and or depth of your drawers. I have enough clearance for the planer to swing by my drawers here, but on the other end, the scroll saw comes close to the bottom of the workbench, so I made these drawers shallower. And that's it, we are done making this workbench. If you wanna make one of these workbenches for yourself, I've got free 3D plans now available on my website. You can find those plans, as well as all the tools and materials used in this video down in the video description. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and I'd love to hear any questions or thoughts you might have about the build, so be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you're not already a subscriber, consider hitting the subscribe button, and if you wanna see more videos like this one, check them out over here. Until next time, Go build yourself.